my name is Jerry Croth, a uh, professor in California. I wrote this book called Messages from the Gods, a scientific exposition on the extraterrestrial origin of crop circles. And um, this is the 42nd crop circle I'm talking about. All right, so uh, in the past, when I did a video on a crop circle, your usual reaction is, oh my God, is that possibly true? Is this possibly a message from an extraterrestrial source? And in the past, there were, you say, wow, wow, wow. Okay, so I've done videos with about four wows, but this one, unfortunately, has only one wow. But it is really worth your time because uh, if you get, if you follow this out with a little patience, you're going to say, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Okay, so stick with me. So here we start with a crop circle and a little background, July 20th, 2021. Uh, my first reaction is I didn't like the sloppiness. I thought it was sloppy. And that means it's made by humans. And that means I'm not interested in uh, dealing with or trying to figure it out. Uh, but I think I have an explanation for that. I did notice that uh, some of the irregularities bothered me. But on the other hand, the regularities were stunning. So um, one guy named Joe Passos on the crop circle connector identified nine dark parts, nine light parts. Okay. I call them sticks. I don't know what to call them. There are about 18 altogether. And if you look at the comments on the prop, crop circle connector, uh, some people say it's a game of backgammon, or it's a radio frequency, or it's reminiscent of the Kukulkan pyramid. And um, I wasn't impressed with any of those theories. But Red Collie, that's his pen name, his name is really Dr. Horace Drew, PhD from Caltech, one of the few scientists interested in crop circles. He does really good work. And he said, this is a mathematical inversion. The crop circle is up there on your left, uh, on the top, and he says it goes this way if you call, and it's called rotational mirror and inversion symmetries in mathematical terms. That caught my eye. I thought, that sounds uh, intelligent to me. So what is it? But then I took and started experimenting. And I did what you just saw in that video. I turned it a different way. So look at what I did. On your left, you see the observer. And I reversed the letter B. Okay, you see that? Because if you cut this thing down the center, and then you take the bottom and you put it on the top and reverse it, that's what you get on your right. In other words, the observer, to see that figure on your right, the observer has to be standing in front and standing in back upside down. So the observer, to see the figure on the right, the observer must be in two places at once, in the front and then upside down in the back at the same time. Okay. And I thought that was an existential issue. I thought it had something to do with relativity theory and mathematics. And so it was time to write some professors. Now, when I write professors, I'm a professor. They often respond out of politeness, but I never say I'm talking about a crop circle. But I showed them a diagram and I talk about the diagram. And I wrote to a professor of mathematical topology. And I wrote to two professors who knew about Einstein's theory of relativity and entanglement and non-locality and ask them what they had to say. And here's what the mathematician said. He said, this does make for some strange visuals. I'm not aware of a term for such images. He couldn't plug it into anything he knew. Uh, a relativity physicist writes, and no, there isn't a concept for what you are describing in relativity, meaning what I'm describing is Two observer, or one observer in two places at the same time. Is that possible? In quantum mechanics, there's a concept of location being a probabilistic quantity. So an observer has some probability of being at multiple locations. 
But once this observer makes an observation, then the wave function collapses and he, she is now definitely in one single place. That was a very interesting reply. Here's another physicist replying to the same question. Can an observer be in two places at the same time? Special relativity is almost about the opposite. It's about how two different observers who think they are seeing things are in fact seeing the same thing. And it gives us instructions for how to translate from one observer's point of view to the others without losing or gaining anything in the process. So, in other words, my sojourn to the academic world didn't result in anything. Okay, we're stumped. Where do we go now? Standing in the park today wondering, why does a frisbee appear larger the closer it gets? And then it hit me. <laughs> now, I don't know if YouTube will allow that joke, uh, but he's saying, basically, why does the Frisbee get larger and larger the closer it gets to you? And then it hit me. Well, and then it hit me, too, because Dr. Horace Drew said, hey, by the way, don't you know that this crop circle is near a natural landmark? Look, you see the crop circle on your right, lower right, Look over to your left. That's a solar farm. I think it's a solar farm. I'm going to expand that view. It's right there hitting you right in the face like the Frisbee. That's a solar farm, isn't it? So I wanted to make sure because uh, my interpretation kind of depends upon that. So I wrote to Bassingstoke. Uh, this crop circle is in a place called Tufton, population 500. But the county council... It's called Bassingstoke. I sent them a Google photo and I said, is that a solar farm? And they said they believe that it was. Okay, so now it reminded me of something that I once did. About two years ago, I did a crop circle interpretation about that crop circle. You see that crop circle over there? It was near a solar farm. And the interpretation of this, look, it's got 12 squares it's got 12 circles and then 12 more circles, okay? That's another crop circle near another farm. It was called the Mungum Hill Crop Circle. And I worked on it and I published a, a piece on it. And the interpretation was, that's magnesium. Magnesium has 12 electrons, 12 protons, 12 neutrons, and it's near a solar farm. And I discovered, well, 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 uh, Magnesium can be used to make less toxic solar cells. Magnesium has something to do with magnesium ion batteries that are just under development. It has something to do with c clean energy source in the use of solar cells. So that was that interpretation. So the question is now, is this the same thing? This crop circle has 18 little sticks and argon is something that has 18 electrons. Is it possible this crop circle is talking about argon and that has something to do with solar cells and solar energy and solar farms? Or is this crop circle talking about fluorine because Fluorine has nine electrons, and there are nine white sticks, and there are nine black sticks in there. You see, are you following my thinking from magnesium to this, to this, to this? And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be cool? Or maybe it's talking about both argon and fluorine. But argon's a gas. What's that have to do with solar cells? So I said to myself at this moment, wouldn't that be cool if... If this was a discovery and this crop circle is talking about argon or fluorine and how those things might make solar cells better. But there's a little voice in my head that said, uh, you're probably going out too far out on the limb and you're barking up the wrong tree. And uh, this is going to be a dead end, Jerry. OK, so two competing ideas here. But here comes the first wow. Are you ready for your first wow? And I'm not going to give you any pictures here. The first wow is this. Argon is related to solar cell development. And guess what? Fluorine is related 
to solar cell development. I kid you not. And that's the first wow. And that's the major wow. It's amazing. So let's do a li learn a little bit about argon and fluorine and solar cells. And we need to learn a little bit about how solar cells work. So it's not going to get too technical. Yes, it is. Magic happens, the photovoltaic effect. Wires are then painted onto the wafer, providing a method to harness the flow of electricity. At this point, the wafer is a solar cell. When the sun hits the negative side of the solar cell, some of the negatively charged electrons are knocked loose from their atoms. They travel across the PN junction to the positive side, where there are holes available for them to settle into. This creates a direct current, or DC flow. This current is measured in amps. Simultaneously, a voltage potential is created between the two sides of the solar cells. Okay, so uh, we've got a positive and a negative, light and dark, and an exchange of electrons. And that's what generates the current. Let me say this again more slowly. So we have two layers, negative and positive, that make a solar cell work. What do argon and fluorine have to do with any of that? That's our question that we're pursuing. Well, let's start looking at some scientific literature. Fluorine. Now, I don't expect to understand these kinds of articles. we got about 12 authors, mainly in China, talking about fluorine and solar cells. It seems that fluorine improves solar cell efficiency by 7%. That article appears five months after the crop circle. So the crop circle is kind of state-of-the-art, isn't it? Here's another article on fluorine, how it, tr by treating the solar cell with fluoride, it protects the solar cell. How about argon? Well, here's another one, which I don't understand, but it's a gas. What's a gas got to do with it? Well, gas, argon gas, seems to purify the silicon wafers that make photovoltaic cells and improves efficiency. This article appears five months before the crop circle. Okay, how about argon and fluorine? I mean, eight, nine plus, nine plus 18? I don't beg to tell you what that article is about, but it mentions argon. It mentions inversions. Like our crop circle, it seems to improve efficiency. It, it appears six months before the crop circle. Again, all Chinese authors, I think it's published in Nature Communications. I tried to write to some of these people, didn't get very far. Uh, here's another one, a um, very technical article. Mentions argon right there. Mentions fluorine right there. It has to do with solar cells right there. Can you see it? Seems to improve solar efficiency. This article appears six years before the crop circle. Huh. So, where do we go from here? Fluorine and argon, nine electrons, 18 electrons. Positive to negative, remember? Uh, those what light and dark things and turning it upside down and mirroring and inversions. We have layers, we have sandwiching in the crop circle, we have sandwiching in the solar cell. So there's your crop circle. And is it talking about different ways of layering and how uh, fluorine or argon can be evolved in that process? And that's my attempt at layering. And that's Horace Drew's attempt at layering. So what about the sloppiness? Uh, I still couldn't figure that out, but then I realized maybe the sloppiness was intentional. The electrons have to migrate from the positive to the negative, and that permeability may be being portrayed in the sloppiness. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not exactly sure of myself on that one, but it's, it's a reasonable supposition. So here's my conclusion. One, this is over my head. It's probably over your head. Okay. Number two, 
Without scientists seriously willing to entertain crop circles, we are left pretty much on our own trying to figure these things out as far as we can take it. So apologies up front. I have a PhD in psychology, not in material science. So what we do know is that this crop circle seems to be talking about argon with 18 electrons and about fluorine with nine, nine light, nine dark, about sandwiching layers, about light and dark, about positive and negative, about inversions, and about solar power generation because it's right near a solar farm. All right, that much we can figure out on our own. So in my book, I try to translate crop circles into English. I had 42 of them, which I think were extraterrestrial communications. Many, many more than that, but not within my intellectual grasp. Much too complicated for me. But this one, here's the translation. Are you ready? Your species is struggling to confront global warming and to derive more energy from the sun to create electricity. Study both argon and fluorine as elements that separately or in combination can improve solar cell efficiencies. Thank you, E.T. It's an advisory. Now, I have a little postscript for skeptics who say, wait, Jerry, there are no aliens. There are no messages from the gods. There are no if UFOs, and all crop circles are made by people. Okay, let's talk to those people. So their theory is that's just a pretty design that people made in a farmer's field. Okay, let's take that on. What's pro what are the problems with that theory? Okay, all right. For, for one thing, the crop circle has positive and negative intricacies. It's got mirror reversals. The observer must be in two places at the same time to make it a congruent whole. And it's stumped one mathematical topologist, and it's stumped two quantum physicists. So, my friend, this crop circle is more than just a pretty picture. Okay, it is far more complex than you think. All right, let's try another one. All right, human beings made this crop circle. They are climate activists. They want to make a statement about argon and fluorine and the need for more research in solar power generation. These are just human beings who made a crop circle, emphasizing the need to study argon and fluorine more. Okay, still only made by humans. What are problems with that thinking? Well, <clears throat> here's one. That's a great theory. These people are smart. They know about state-of-the-art research in argon and fluorine, right? Up to date, six months ago, or six months in the future. They're smart PhD candidates or whatever. And they're making a statement about how to improve solar efficiencies. That means they care about human humanity. They care about the environment. They care. Well, that's all true, except that they're criminals because they vandalized a farmer's field. They didn't go to that farmer and say, hey, can we make a crop circle? We'll pay you for crop damage. They didn't do that. There's no evidence that they did that. So they've vandalized a farmer's field. They're do-gooders and criminals at the same time. They want to help humanity and screw a farmer at the same moment. Doesn't make sense. Okay, what does make sense is that this was an extraterrestrial message sent by a benevolent intelligence to aid and assist humanity in its quest to stop global warming and improve the technology of solar power generation. That's the theory. And that's the wow. So that's the book. Um, you can purchase it on Amazon. The article about this, the, all the footnotes to this talk, you can get them from an article that I'm posting on my website, and you can get it there. So thank you very much for watching, and enjoy your day.